whenever I start? Okay. Right. Harlan and I had been going out for three months when we drove cross country together. He had bought a new car in Seattle to celebrate his divorce. And the plan was he'd come to L.A. to pick me up at my parents' house. We'd swing by the Sundance Film Festival because he had shot a movie that was screening there and I had a press pass. And then we would drive home to New York together. We knew this was a big deal. Uh, you learn a lot about somebody on a road trip. But I was 35 years old, and I was ready to meet the guy I was going to spend the rest of my life with, and I was pretty sure it was going to be him. So we set out. We spent a couple of weeks in Park City, watching movies, trying to find the indie next big thing, and going to bars, drinking watered-down cocktails, and eating free chicken wings, and then we hit the road. Our first stop was Arches National Park. In our motel room, Harlan kneeled on our tacky days in bedspread and told me he loved me for the first time. His actual words were, you know I love you a lot. And I realized that might actually mean the opposite, like it does in French. Je t'aime beaucoup actually means I don't really love you that much, I like you. But I took it to mean he loved me because I thought he did and because I wanted him to. And I told him I loved him back because I had been ready to tell him a long time ago, but I knew I had to let him tell, him, tell me first. The next morning, we had our first real fight. I wanted to see Arches at sunrise. But he was unwilling to do anything until he had had his morning coffee and poop. So <laughs> I sat there staring out through this icy window. Oh, did I mention this was over the holidays? Freezing out. Sundance Film Festival, January. I stared out through this icy window at the parking lot waiting for him. And I worried that this meant he was inflexible or that he was lacking in spontaneity or romance. But I also knew that compromise is required in relationships, and I decided to let it go. By the time we got to the park, uh, when we finally got to the park, he convinced me to take off all my clothes and pose for pictures lying naked on a massive fucking freezing boulder overlooking the stunning expanse of this park. <laughs> and the pictures turned out incredible. And I figured this indicated enough creativity, spontaneity, romance, talent, that I could let go of the fact that you couldn't mess with his morning poop routine. <laughs> in the middle of the country, in the middle of Texas, we had lunch at one of those barbecue joints where they'll pick up the tab if you eat a steak as big as an aardvark. And uh, I sat there sucking on spare ribs, and I asked him to move in with me. He nodded. He looked soulfully into my eyes. He told me he'd think about it. In Bro Bridge, Louisiana, we took ecstasy and danced at one of those down-home foot-stopping joints. On the way out of town, we stopped for daiquiris at a drive through bar. Uh -huh. And then hightailed to New Orleans, where we stayed with my best friend from high school. When we got there, Harlan got a phone call asking him to shoot a commercial in New York City. We decided the money was too good to pass up, and he was going to fly there, shoot the thing, and then meet me back in New Orleans. Uh, he stayed with my sister in my apartment because she was house-sitting for me and he had subletters in his. Uh, so I would call him and he would be totally cracking up with my sister or she'd be yelling at him for putting one of her sweaters in the dryer. And I was a little jealous, but I was also psyched that my little sister and my boyfriend were getting along like siblings so soon. Um, and then a snowstorm hit New York City. So it left Harlan stranded in New York and me 1,300 miles away with the car. And that is how I found myself driving through the American South all by myself in the middle of winter. 
Mostly I stayed in really dodgy roadside motels where I would bolt the door, pull the covers up to my chin, and whisper into the phone that I was okay, really I was. Um, I stayed with a grad school friend in Atlanta and, and his wife, and the next day I asked them where I could go on the way home to see something beautiful, and they recommended Asheville, North Carolina. And I listened to them stupidly because I found myself winding up and up and up this mountain. And it was beautiful, but, but it was uh, miles out of my way. And the weather was vicious. That night, I went to town to check out the sights. And on my way home, the roads turned icy. I lost control of the car, spun spun, landed on the, on the shoulder, whimpered all the way back and called Harlan and he soothed me with his gentle voice and said, you're going to be okay. He told me to call first thing in the morning so we could make a plan and he told me that he loved my apartment and he wanted to move in together as soon as I got back. So he was planning to meet me along the way, but it clearly was never going to happen. So the next day I drove to Richmond, Virginia, and I drove straight for this hotel in my guidebook that was way too expensive, but it was clean and classy. And I asked the guy how much a room was going to cost, and he maybe took pity on me, maybe thought I was cute. Woo! Yeah, already? The big hug. Oh my goodness. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So anyway, um... What happened next? He met me in Washington, D.C. to do the last leg of the journey with me because that's the kind of guy he is. And now he's my husband. 